OK, let's see what our gravitational lens image is going to look like. And if there was nothing in the foreground, what we might see in our telescope field of view, say here's our telescope field of view, is we'd see the background star. But because of the lens, instead we should see two images, or maybe even a complete ring, a distance in angular space, alpha, from where the single image was going to be. So if alpha isn't too small, we can see these things. So what's the geometry here? Well, let's say here we have the background star. Here we have the Earth. And we've got the rays, a ray of light going either way around. And for the sake of simplicity, we'll put our dark thing, whatever it is, exactly halfway. There's a distance to the background star. And we have R here, R there, this in the middle has a mass. And we know from the lensing equation that this deflection angle here, theta, is given by the equation theta equals 4g m over r c squared. So from that we want to measure this alpha here, which is this angle in there. Okay, well, from symmetry, that's going to be theta as well here. This, so for that's going to be theta, and all the way across here is going to be theta. So we know that alpha equals half theta. We also know that this right angle triangle here, tan theta equals opposite over adjacent, which is half d. But the angle alpha and theta are going to be very, very small. Sorry, that should be tan theta over 2, tan, tan alpha. And as the angles are very, very small, uh, as long as we measure everything in radians, we can get rid of the tan. So what we get is that theta over 2 equals r d over 2. So r equals theta d over 4. So what we can do is substitute this one in here. We've got two, two unknowns, r and theta, and two equations. So that should be solvable. So substitute this one into here. And we end up with theta equals 4g m times 4 all over d theta c squared, so 4 times 4 is 16. We want to take the theta up here, so that gives us that theta squared equals 16 g m over d c squared. Take the square roots of both sides and substitute, so we know that alpha is half of theta, so we end up that alpha equals the square root 4g m over d c squared. And this angle alpha is so widely used, it's got a particular name, it's called the Einstein radius. This is the equation for when the lens is exactly halfway between. There's a slightly more complicated equation for the Einstein radius if the lens is not midway between. But this is where halfway between is where it has the most lensing influence. So, what is this number? Let's assume we've got a Jupiter mass planet halfway to the middle of our galaxy. In that case, d is a distance from the sun to the bulge, which is about 25,000 light years. M is the mass of Jupiter, which is 
about 1.9 by 10 to the 27 kilograms. C is the speed of light, G the gravitational constant, stick this into here, and you end up with alpha equals 1.5 by 10 to the minus 10 radians. We need to convert that into some unit we can understand. So a radian is pi over, so it's 180 over pi degrees. So multiply by 180 over pi. That will give us degrees, but the angle is going to be much smaller than a degree, degree. So then we have to times 60 for arc minutes, times another 60 to get it to arc seconds. Because an arc minute is a sixtieth of a degree, and an arc second is a sixtieth of an arc minute. So multiply by 180 over pi times 60 times 60 gives you 31 times 10 to the minus 6 arc seconds. So 31 micro arc seconds. Now bear in mind, a typical telescope can see things, has, has its images fuzzed out by about an arc second. So we're talking you know, 100,000 times smaller than that. Even the Hubble Space Telescope only gets about 0 0.1 arc seconds, maybe 0 0.03 at very good times, so still vastly smaller than that. So this is an incredibly small angle, which means we're basically never going to be able to see these multiple images.